Ramona Shelburne, one of our favorites, was uh, there last night in attendance. ESPN NBA insider, senior writer, and for the second straight year, ESPN's NBA coverage celebrates International Women's Day. Today, all women-led broadcasts, more than 70 women on camera, behind the scenes, leading the NBA coverage. Mavs and Pelicans tip off at 7.30 Eastern on ESPN. Tune in for NBA Today, NBA Countdown shows as well. Ramona will be part of the NBA Today panel at 3 Eastern. Good to see you again. Ramona, what's that mean okay. to you, International Women's Day? Well, you know, for me, it's 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 something like when I came up, I was always like the the only one in the press box. And me, me, me and maybe one other person. I remember Lisa Dillman from the LA Times. It was me and her on the Clippers. And, it, and then we look around, there was nobody else. Um, and now that now I, I see women everywhere. And so I think that's really cool that it's it's uh I'm glad we celebrate it, but it's almost because because we've done so much here, um, it's not as rare anymore. And I and I'm I'm glad every night I, I walk into the studio, I see I see women there. But when you were in high school or college, yeah. who did you look up to? Oh man, that's Jackie Mack. <laughs> Jackie McMullen, right? Um, so I grew up in LA and I grew up watching and watching the Lakers, right? And the Boston Celtics. And so I think the first time I met Jackie McMullen when I, I went on to cover the Lakers against the Celtics in the 2008 finals, um, I tried to ask, you know, try to introduce myself. And it's the first time, Dan, you know me, I talk a lot, right? Very rare that I <laughs> cannot find words. I think I just I could not even talk to Jackie McMullen. <laughs> like, I was like, ja Jackie, my name is. You're, you're Jackie. Like, <laughs> like that. it's like that uh, Chris Farley character on Saturday Night Live. Yeah. You're Paul McCartney. You're, so, yeah. <laughs> and she's like, yes. <laughs> right. I, but, um, and I don't know if people understand the imprint that Jackie McMullen yeah. has left on the NBA because, like, I, I remember we played pickup basketball in Chicago during the <laughs> NBA finals. She was on my team. She was just you know, part of the the media. She she was not yeah. somebody different, but she was. Right. But she yeah, just she's Jackie Mac. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Unbelievable. Well, uh, you know, and for me too, like playing college softball, like, you know, we we played I played at Stanford and it was like we made it to the College World Series my senior year. And that was the year where they put the semifinal, they put the whole World Series on ESPN. That was the first year they did that. Before that you had to make it all the way to the semifinals or the finals. And so, like, I mean, that's, I think that might have been my first TV appearance, right? It's just being on ESPN in the, in the College World Series. But now it's like, turn on and there's a softball game all the time. There's people, you know, all, all summer long or all spring long we're watching it. Uh, how would you sum up the atmosphere last night with Pal Gasol's jersey oh, was, retired? Yeah, it was awesome. Um, you know, first of all, like, there was uh, there's people who came back, right? So there was, you know, it was, it was great to see Phil Jackson up on the up on the video board. He did a video message for him. He was he stayed mostly in a suite, but we haven't seen Phil in a lot of years here. So that was, that was cool seeing him. I saw his whole, um, uh, the, the entire Spanish media was there, right? Um, <laughs> they were, uh, I think I got interviewed by seven outlets from Barcelona because <laughs> uh, he really is a national hero there. But I thought it was interesting, Dan, because he, you know, he only played seven years for the Lakers, right? And they won two titles in those seven years, uh, but he was universally beloved. And it's, it's, it's easy to forget, like when the last year or so of his time there, it's kind of awkward, right? They tried to trade him for the in the Chris Paul trade, and then there was other trade subsequent trade discussions. It was like kind of a messy ending there, um, and so. But he's he's sort of right back into the family now, and I thought it was appropriate. His his jersey is right next to Kobe and right below James Worthy's, um, and it's like that's the kind of player Powell was. Like he was, um, he was such a a gentleman, such a great complimentary player to Kobe. Like you could not have designed a better complimentary player. For Kobe Bryant than Pau Gasol. And like the one thing I always remember, uh, he when they traded for him, like the Lakers never did midseason trades. Never. Because the, Bill ran the triangle. And you know, the triangle might as well have been hieroglyphics to most people, right? Pau literally had like one meeting. He was like, Oh yeah, I got this. Okay. Oh wow. Because <laughs> he's so smart. And and I think that basketball IQ and and with him and Kobe in terms of their basketball IQ running the triangle, it was just a seamless fit. And um, it was great. It was great seeing there. He had his two little kids. He had like the baby there. And then randomly at the end, this is like such a random note, but it was, it was like something that sticks out to me. Jimmy Butler came over. I know. I know. Okay. And I, and I remember I was like doing the math. I'm like, wait, the heat played in Miami last night and they have a game against Cleveland tomorrow night in Miami. <laughs> like, so did Jimmy just fly who Jimmy played with Powell in Chicago, obviously. 
Did Jimmy just fly on the off day to like give Powell a hug? That's pretty, cool. pretty amazing. Would you rather <laughs> have your jersey retired in the Raptors uh -huh. with the Lakers? Uh-huh. Or just be a Hall of Famer elsewhere? I mean, you can't be in the Raptors with the Lakers without being a Hall of Famer. So there's like, it's kind of a debate here in LA, right? There's a lot of Lakers who could have their jersey retired, but they're not Hall of Famers. So like a Michael Cooper, for example, Derek Fisher, those guys have a lot of rings, but they're not up in the Raptors because they're not in the Hall of Fame. Oh, okay. So that's why it's like a, like, you know, they got a lot of jerseys up there. <laughs> so they got to, they have a like certain standard and it's, uh, you know, they're doing it quick now too. They don't wait to retire jerseys until you go into the hall. Um, but it was, it was a great scene. And, and the only thing about Powell, like, you know, do you remember when at the end of his time there, when Mike D'Antoni got there and there was this big fight over you know, playing Powell and Dwight Howard together because playing the two bigs and Mike D'Antoni was like, no, it's just, it's just simple math. You can't have two bigs on the floor at one time. And you know, it's not how it works. Right. And Powell like really was very offensive. Like at one point they brought Powell off the bench. You remember that? Um, by the end of his time, though, Powell was starting to shoot three pointers. And then when he goes to Chicago and to, I think he finished up in, in, uh, in, uh, Milwaukee and, uh, and Portland, he was shooting threes, <laughs> he yeah. was shooting threes. So you can see that evolution of the game. Like he just had to change because the game changed so much. Like now you, you have to be a stretch four or five. If I changed rosters, if I put uh -huh. the Lakers roster in the Clippers uniform okay, and I put the Clippers in the Lakers uniform. How much yeah. coverage do, ah. the, do the Clippers get? Oh, that's a great question. Yeah, they, it'd be every day. I mean, even though I don't like, like Kawhi Leonard probably wouldn't say anything, but like people would cover him every day. And that's, um, you know, Paul George is a good, good media guy, you know, but um, it's really just, it's the uniform. It's the stage. It's the, it's the bright lights. So something. even if LeBron was with the Clippers, they, the Lakers are still going to be the star. Yeah. Yeah, the Lakers. It's it's a it's a Laker and Dodger town. I mean, yeah. we, you know, I do radio in LA, Dan, and we always we we know the demos of who listens and what they want and when they turn it on, when they turn it off. And it's literally like if you want to rank the top five topics, right? Of like what gets the people to listen, it's Lakers, Lakers, <laughs> maybe a little Dodgers, Lakers, Lakers. <laughs> it's literally it's like that level of interest. Do you remember the first time you sat down with Kobe or interviewed Kobe? I don't know if I remember the first time. I remember some of the best times, right? Where he, um, uh, you know, Kobe's like a year older than me. So I was in high school when he came into the league. And I like, I remember when he took Brandy to the prom, that was a big deal. And uh, so when I got to cover him, I just, I just graduated college, maybe a year or two earlier. And I think they sent me out there to run quotes. Howard Beck was our beat writer at the time. And mm -hmm. I was giving him a morning off or whatever. And I was like, really starstruck because this was like the Shaq Kobe Lakers era. And I'm like a 24 year old kid, just you know, hold the microphone. Right. Um, and, uh, and after a little while, like Kobe, Kobe took note of who was out there. And I remember one time on a road trip, I was filling in and I think he realized that this was like the first time I'd been on a road trip. And because obviously I wasn't the regular beat guy and he was about to leave the locker room. We were in Memphis and he taps me on the shoulder and he goes, Hey, um, I was about to leave. Do you need me for anything? And oh, I, I was like, oh my God, well, really? Like that level of understanding that, okay, one, I'm young, I'm not here every day, but I'm clearly filling in for the beat writer that night. And he was going to leave. And he, I think he kind of knew like, I'm Kobe, you probably need to talk to me and you're going to look bad if you don't have quotes from me, right? Like it was just that level of recognition mm. where I didn't even think I was relevant at that point. I didn't think he knew my name. MVP vote goes to who? Whew, this year? You know, I think it's I think this year it's Jokic, but I want to see how how this year finishes, right? Cuz um Jokic to me like you can you, you have to separate the last 2 years even though I know it's going to factor in people's mind of like whether you vote for him or not. Um but like you know, early in the year I thought it was Jason Tatum cuz the Celtics got out to such a great start and he's having a like a career year plus I think he's a better two-way player. Um the Celtics kind of faded a little bit here, but why are we ignoring Giannis? Like they're the best team in the East right now. And Giannis is having a great year. And then, and then, Oh, just, just when you think it's, it's one of those two guys, then Joel and B comes out and has an incredible game. And they beat Giannis in the bucks the other day with him hitting a key shot and, and getting a defensive play. So I think I, Jokic feels like the solid front runner right now, 
But if that East finishes in a in an interesting way, like say the Bucks stay on this run and they just you know build a four game lead, it's gonna be hard to not vote for Giannis. Um, or let's say Philly gets up there. Philly's been playing really well, and Embiid has been playing out of his mind. So I think I think it's one of those three at this point. We, for a while, I thought we were at five. Then we were down to four candidates. I think Tatum's kind of fallen out right now. Um, but we'll see how maybe they hit a finishing kick. So it's it's one of those three. And uh, it's going to be interesting as we go to the end here uh, to see the, you know, Jokic has such a solid case now, especially with Denver in first place. Like yeah. I thought he has a better case this year than he has in the last two years. But best team in the West is who? Yeah. <sighs> Okay, let's 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 reframe that question. Okay, yeah, I know it's your show, but I'll reframe it okay. for you. Um, okay, if you had to say, there's you get one team, and that's where you're putting all your money on, right? Versus the best team, right? Who do you think is the most likely team to come out of the West at this moment in time, March eighth? I think I think I'm rolling with Phoenix, right? I yeah. think the team I have the most faith in is probably Phoenix right now. Um, just because of their ceiling, because of how much belief I have in Devin Booker and and Kevin Durant, and I and I think my second choice would probably be the Warriors, which is crazy because I know they just lost in Oklahoma City last night, but I I know it's the the heart of a champion, all that stuff. I just when I see them and they're good, I'm like I know it's in there, and I and I feel like. I, I'm never going to write them off until they finally lose. Right? Well, we're we're waiting um, for Joker and Denver to do something in the postseason. Yeah, you know, yeah, you know I mean, we're waiting for Giannis to do something. He won an MVP, correct. and and if you give him the MVP yeah. this year, that's why I, I'm I have no problem yeah. with that. But yeah, I'm surprised that Joker is going to win the MVP only from the standpoint of the media loves to tell a different story. They they've been waiting for Luca to to be that MVP, and that's not happening. You know, I still look at the most valuable player in the NBA, and I think it's Kevin Durant, because where he yeah. goes, I mean, he can win a championship. You know, he wherever he goes, wherever he, he goes, yeah, you got to factor him in. And you know, here he is in Phoenix, and we're talking about them. You know, perhaps winning a championship. Uh, I hope you have a great day, a busy day, and yeah. uh, always great to catch up with you. Thank you, Ramona. Thanks. You know, you got you're the only one who has more and better bobbleheads than I do. I've got so many bobbleheads. I don't want any more bobbleheads. But for some, remember when it was the rage? It was like, yeah. oh, you got a bobblehead. And then I was at ESPN. They go, hey, you got a bobblehead. Now it's a thing. Yeah. Like everybody probably sends you their, all of their bobbleheads. Right? Yes. I got a lot of tchotchkes, as we like to say. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Ramona. Thanks, Dad. That's Ramona Shelburne. By the way, second straight year ESPN's NBA coverage uh, celebrates International Women's Day with all women-led broadcast, more than 70 women on camera, behind the cameras, leading NBA's uh, the NBA coverage there. Mavs Pelicans tips off at 7.30 Eastern. Uh, Ramona, you can see here on NBA Today. That starts at 3 Eastern.